Hello, I'm Dr. M. Welcome back to VMC. Today we are going to discuss a timely topic, the H5N1 outbreak that's occurring. And I'm going to give you an update as it's been a little over a year since I last touched on this HPAI. So join me, you'll learn something today. I did cover the basics of what HPAIs are are, as well as specific information about this H5N1 outbreak in February of 2023. That background information will be helpful to you as today we are just going to jump past all of that. Part of why I covered this particular outbreak just over a year ago is because this strain has had unprecedented spread throughout the world and it also has been impacting an unheard of number of different species. The ability of this particular viral strain to spread through different mammal species is obviously quite concerning. So what's changed over the past year? Unfortunately quite a bit. The H5N1 virus continued to spread to more and more species of animals. This included spread to a polar bear in the Arctic. In the spring of 2024, there were some goats that ended up getting infected. Then in March of 2024, there were a number of different dairy farms that had cows being infected with H5N1 in the US. There are now over 60 herds that have been documented as being infected in a number of different states. In April and May, there were also reports of two people who worked with infected dairy cows that ended up getting H5N1 as well. The US has implemented some measures about the movement of cattle within the US as well as moving cows outside of the US to other countries, say like Canada. There were many barn cats that also ended up getting H5N1 and that ended up dying from it. It's because of this that we know that this H5N1 virus does get into milk that is being produced by cows that are infected. This H5N1 virus is spread spread through the air just like COVID is. It's now also being recommended that people who work closely with cows or with flocks of birds are wearing appropriate PPE and this includes a respirator. I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about how this spread of H5N1 into cattle is a big deal that we need to be paying attention to. Uh, one, we know that it is impacting the people who work with these cows. Two, we know that H5N1 is getting into the milk that's being produced and that animals who drank that milk, like the barn cats, ended up getting sick and dying. This, of course, should raise up in your mind significant concern about the safety of milk that's being produced. As we've known for decades, you should never be drinking raw milk or milk products. It is crucially important for your safety and for the safety of your pets that you are consuming pasteurized milk products. What we do know is that fully cooking meat products and eggs, that means no runny yolks, does seem to kill this H5N1 virus. But when it comes to the pasteurization process, it gets a little bit hazy. The exact parameters for how pasteurization occurs does vary depending on where you are geographically located. But in general, it involves heating the milk to about 72 degrees Celsius for 16 seconds and then rapidly cooling it back down. This does, without a shadow of a doubt, make milk far safer and you should always be consuming pasteurized milk products without a doubt. What we don't know is if this works to kill this specific virus. I did find one research study where a group of scientists took milk that had H5N1 in it and they fed that raw milk to mice who also ended up getting sick showing again that if you are consuming milk that is contaminated with this virus, it is very possible it will make you sick. The scientists then put the milk through a pasteurization process. They found that this did not completely kill the virus. They also refrigerated the milk for five weeks to see if the virus would just die off over time. 
it did not. What was found was that in order to completely get rid of the virus that was in the milk, you had to heat it up to 145 degrees Fahrenheit for at least five minutes. Now, to be fair, performing pasteurization on a small amount of milk does not exactly replicate what commercial pasteurization of milk looks like. Editing Dr. M here, there is now a preprint of a second study that added the virus to milk that was not infected, and they found in this situation that the pasteurization process did appear to completely kill the virus. Now they talk about in their discussion how the other study found the opposite and they suggest that there are two potential reasons. There could be slight differences in how they heated and cooled the milk. There are other situations where viruses gain some thermal protection when they are shed naturally to the milk and not added artificially later, like this preprint of a study has done. They do say that, of course, we need more work to be done in this space, which I fully agree with. So we can't say for certain that bulk commercial pasteurization wouldn't be more effective. But at this point, it does bring up the question about whether pasteurization actually kills the H5N1 virus or not. I wish that I had a definite answer as far as definite guidance, but I simply don't because we don't have enough information at this point. I just want to raise this as something in your mind that you start looking into and following so that when we do get more information about this, that you will be prepared to make changes as needed to the foods that you and your pets are consuming. Due to how this HPAI has been spreading through literally every other species, I am concerned that it will eventually learn how to spread from human to human. This is particularly concerning because over the past 20 years, we have been tracking HPAI infections in humans around the world. There have been 889 documented cases and this virus had a 52% mortality rate. That's shockingly high and incredibly concerning. We must take this seriously. These measures will make it harder for H5N1 and SARS-CoV-2 to have the opportunity to spread from person to person. The fewer hosts that we give it, the less chances it has to mutate and learn how to spread between people. These measures will also help to protect our pets. Our pets are obviously vulnerable to H5N1 and they are also vulnerable to SARS-CoV-2. We also need to be keeping our pets on leashes, long lines, under direct supervision so that they just don't have the opportunity to interact with any remains that they might find or with any birds or other animals that may be currently infected with this H5N1 virus. And really keep an eye on the information about dairy cows and how H5N1 is impacting milk. I hope that we will get additional information about whether commercial pasteurization ends up successfully killing this virus or not. I'll do my best to update you. I'm not thrilled with how quickly this virus is learning to spread through all of these different species. It's not great. At this precise moment in time, the risk to the general public is still fairly low, according to the World Health Organization. If you live in one of the places where dairy cows are being affected, I would love to hear from you. But no matter what your thoughts are, please let me know them down below. If you have a topic you'd like me to cover in the future, don't hesitate to comment that as well. I love to hear from you and I read every single comment. To prove it, I highlight a new one every week. I also put up a new video most Fridays and cannot wait to see you next week. Bye. What's wrong with you? You okay in there? Are you hungry? Do you want one more? Oh, you do. <laughs> you do. Okay. Oh, good dog, good dog. You want one more? All right. We'll go. <laughs>